so student today we are going to see the topic as a vibration produced in a string now already in the previous two lectures we have seen the vibration of air column when the pipe is open and one end and also we have seen the vibration of air column when the pipe is open at both the end right and during that vibration of air column the sound wave is get reflected either from open end or from closed end and then there will be a formation of longitudinal stationary wave in the form of notes and antinodes now here in the vibration produced in the string in that what is the case here we are going to consider a string this string will get stretched in between these two rigid support so when this string will get stretched between the rigid support this rigid support will provide a tension and if this string is made to vibrate by some external support like if i am going to bring a vibrating tuning fork near this sonometer uh, near this vibrating string so due to forced vibration this string will start vibrating now what are these words i am going to use this concept already we have seen in the concept of resonance or in concept of your forced vibration so in forced vibration what we have said that body is made to vibrate with some external periodic force same thing here we are going to do here is the string which will be get stretched between two rigid support and this string is made to vibrate with the help of tuning fork so that the string will start vibrating now when the string will start vibrating there will be a transfer wave which will get set up on this length of the string so if i'm saying that from the transfer wave if the cross stretch setting on this length of the string then that cross will be incident on the rigid support and already we have seen the topic reflection of transfer wave from the rigid support so when any transfer wave will incident on a rigid support it will get reflected through a phase change of pi meaning is what if the crust is going to be incident on a rigid wall then it will get reflected as a tuff means what i can say that this crust will act as an incident wave and this reflected trough will be act as a reflected and this incident wave and reflected wave along the length of the string will get superimposed on each other and when they will get superimposed on each other then there will be a formation of stationary wave in the form of loops and this stationary wave i'm going to call it as a transverse stationary wave in which here at the center the string is vibrating with maximum amplitude means here is the formation of antinode and at the rigid wall rigid wall is not free to vibrate therefore displacement of the medium of the particle is zero so at the rigid wall there will be a formation of nodes so at both the rigid wall there will be a formation of nodes and anti node will get formed at the center and like that man on a vibrating string a stationary wave will get set up and in this stationary wave what i am getting suppose i am saying that this is nothing but your length of the string as a l or i can say as a small l then i can say that if mass of that string is small m length of the string is nothing but small l so okay fine i can say capital m is the mass of the string small l is nothing but the length of the string so i can say that linear density of this string 
this is called as a linear density or it is also called as a mass per unit length which will be denoted by let us small cap so for this particular strain the linear density or mass per unit length small m which is equal to nothing but capital m by m right this rigid wall will provide a tension so t is nothing but the tension tension is nothing but t which will be provided by the rigid wall or rigid support and therefore due to force vibration the wave will get set up whose velocity this v along the strain is nothing but under root of t by m where t is nothing but tension imparted to the strain and small m is nothing but the linear density of the strain therefore i am getting v is equal to under root of t by m when such strain will be traveling then frequency of that strain i can say that velocity of that strain v is equal to in terms of frequency v is equal to m into lambda therefore m can be written as as a v upon lambda so your m is equal to v upon lambda we are already knowing this is the value of velocity of the strain that will be given by equation number 1 now we can think about the lambda now in this first mode of vibration along the length of the strain along the length of the strain as a small l one loop is formed one loop is formed means length of the loop is nothing but lambda by 2 means what i am getting the value of lambda lambda is nothing but 2l so this is nothing but my equation number 2 now using this equation 1 and equation 2 i can write for the frequency this is my frequency formula as a free form so in this frequency formula i got a right frequency m is equal to v what is v v is nothing but root t by m divided by what is divided by lambda lambda is how much 2 means what i write frequency m is equal to 1 upon 2 l into root of t by small m this is nothing but the frequency by which the string will vibrate and this frequency value is the lowest value lowest frequency that's why this frequency is to be called as a fundamental frequency of vibration so by this fundamental frequency your string is going to be vibrating so this is to be called as a vibration of an vibration produced along the strain and this mode is to be called as your fundamental mode so in fundamental mode what important point we can note down here in this fundamental mode i am getting that the string is vibrating along the along the length during that there is a formation of one loop one loop is formed this is point number 1 second in that one loop two nodes will be formed at the rigid support and one anti node will be formed at the center due to that what i am getting fundamental frequency the string will vibrate with fundamental frequency m is equal to 1 upon 2l divided by t by m so this is your fundamental frequency by which your string is vibrating i can call it as a equation number a similarly now i can show the two more modes of vibration so i'll say now here i can consider the second mode of vibration how i can produce the second mode of vibration i will consider here rigid support in between these rigid support your length of the string l is there and if i'm going to plug the string at the center so due to that plucking there will be a formation of trough which will incident on rigid wall and at the left side there is a formation of crust which will incident on this rigid wall so crust is incident on rigid wall on the left side and trough will be incident on the right side 
So your crust will get reflected as a trough and trough will get reflected as a crust. And here I am getting the second mode of vibration. So in the second mode of vibration, the two loops are formed along the length L. Means what I can say that this L can be written as lambda dash by 2 plus lambda dash by 2. Because two loops are formed. And two loops are formed, what is the thing? At the rigid support, there is a formation of no. At the center and plucking point, also there is a formation of no. And here, at the center of each loop, there is a formation of anti -node. Means what I can write here? Here I am getting that along the length, there is a formation of two loops. And length of each loop is nothing but lambda divided by 2. So L is equal to lambda dash by 2 plus lambda dash by 2. So L can be written as a lambda dash. Clear? Then we have a formula. Frequency N is equal to B by M. Velocity. What is velocity? Velocity is nothing but root of P by M divided by lambda dash. Because I am saying frequency 1. First all term frequency. Because it is the next one, second one. So it is a first over tone frequency and one is equal to V by lambda dash. Lambda dash that is what? L. Means what I write here? M1 is equal to 1 by L into T by M. Square root of T by M. Right? Now this first over tone frequency I can relate with this fundamental frequency. See here, this in fundamental frequency here is the factor 2. If I shift this two factor in multiplication with n, so what I am getting here, this two factor will come here, I am getting 2n. 2n is equal to what is remaining? 1 by l root of p by n. Means this auto frequency is equal to nothing but 2n. First auto frequency is nothing but here I am getting as a 2n. Right? So this is called as a first overtone frequency or it is also to be called as a second harmonic frequency. So this frequency has a two name. Either I can say it as a first overtone frequency or I can call it as, uh, as a second harmonic frequency. Clear? See here, so what is the shortcut points to be remembered? In the second mode of vibration, there is always formation of, I can say that there is always formation of two loops. Therefore, along the length of the string, L is equal to lambda dash. Hence, what I can say the next point, how many nodes are formed? Three nodes and two antinodes. So that point I will write down. Three nodes and two anti nodes. This is the second point to be remembered. And what is the third point? First over tone frequency. What is first over tone frequency? N1 is equal to 1 upon L under root of T by M, which is equal to 2M. Right? So now I can write all these points here. How many nodes? Two nodes. How many nodes and anti nodes? Three nodes. Two anti nodes. What is first over tone frequency? M1 is equal to 1 upon L root of P by M. So M1 is to be called as a 2M. It is equal to 2M. And this is 2M. So it is to be called as your either first over tone frequency or I can call it as second harmonic